Cliff of Death, warning from Raoul Powell. We're looking at a warning today that is a crisis for many, but possibly an opportunity for some. G'day crypto goers, I'm Adam Stokes. Something a little different today. There are a few financial analysts or commentators with more street cred than Real Vision's Raoul Pal. But today we're going to explore his Twitter thread that has been put in an article from Ainsley Bullion outlining his reasoning for an urgent warning of an imminent currency crisis. Now if you're watching this video, it is a little bit blurry because these are screenshots of the thread, but if you're only listening, you'll probably get some good content out of this. We're also going to look at some charts that are within this thread. So I'll read through this thread that was quite interesting to me and will likely be very interesting to you. And the only reason why I'm reading this thread is because it was in a reputable site, which is Ainsley Bullion. We get some good information from there, not just about crypto, but about money and gold and economics and finances, but also also within the crypto space, many crypto goers that I respect deeply have referred to some of the charts that are listed within this thread. That is, they haven't spoken about the thread directly, but they've spoken about the charts that you're about to see. So the thread begins, a currency crisis? When the long-term charts all start pointing to a single event risk, I pay attention. When those charts are at the key level, I focus. And when they break, it's time for action. Something really big is going on. We're at the most important junction in FX markets in my entire 30-year career. The dollar appears at risk of an uncontrolled rise. The Fed Board Trade Weighted Dollar Index is incredibly close to breaking the enormous cup and handle pattern at 130, barely a half a percent away. Now, if you can see these visuals, you can see what's going to happen in these charts and how many of these charts, when stitched together in economic terms, they paint a very interesting picture of what's going to happen, most likely, with fiat currencies. And to many of us in the crypto space, this is not a surprise. But more alarmingly, we can see that many financial analysts inside and outside the crypto space have foreseen this warning. Now, before I go on with this thread, I want to talk a little bit about technical analysis. There is a lot of for and against when it comes to technical analysis. With TA in the crypto space, the reason why I personally am not a big fan of it is because I have immense respect for the volatility of the markets in crypto. Why? Because the market caps are so small. We are pioneers on a new financial frontier and technology frontier. But that does not mean I don't respect TA in traditional markets. TA is pretty effective. And if you look at some of the guys who are really good at it, they can in fact make a lot of money off it. But even they will tell you that not all TA all the time is 100% effective. And if it were 100% effective, all of us would simply pay someone to do TA for us. We'd know when to buy and when to sell and all of us would be rich. And of course that wouldn't work because that in itself would have an effect on the market and everyone would retire just on TA. So TA is not 100% effective. It is even less effective in crypto markets. But when it comes to fiat or as I say traditional markets, it is more effective because the swings in these markets are typically smaller and they have had a longer history. Therefore they are more predictable as in they create more patterns. Now that's not to say of course that markets can't crash and do crazy stuff but as we go through this keep in mind that we are looking at multiple charts that paint a very bleak picture for fiat currencies and of course the flow on effect for this is massive we've seen financial crisis in the past whether we're talking about the gfc in our lifetime or the great recession of the 30s in past lifetimes well most past lifetimes there are still people alive who were in that great recession but we are entering a new world of globalization and global markets working very quickly and intertwined very deeply. So when a big currency collapses, you will see immense flow on effects magnified to an extent that we've never seen before. Let's go on with the thread. Raoul Pal states, and this translates into the largest chart pattern in the history of FX, the ADXY head and shoulders top, a pattern so big I can't quite get my head around the outcome. A fall of 20% or more across all Asian major currencies, and we are right on the cliff 
of death. And you can see on this chart now, he has drawn a line along the bottoms of these movements and he has illustrated, as he has called it, and in financial terms, the cliff of death, where when this number drops below that line, that baseline, it will have immense flow on effects. And one of those effects is the momentum of market spiraling out of control as currencies shift very quick in their value and governments flurry to try and correct this. And it typically works out much worse. As we can see, more money is pumped into the markets. It creates more inflation. The big banks are bailed out and many people lose their super funds. Moving forward through this, he states, we are also at the key juncture of the JP Morgan Emerging Markets Currency Index. New lows await any day now. And one currency after another is approaching and then falling off the cliff of death. The Aussie as in the Australian dollar, the Aussie broke a while ago and has been tumbling ever since. The flightless Kiwi, the New Zealand dollar, took its first step off the cliff just last night. The Korean won. Yikes. This is one of the most crucial levels in its history. These big wedge patterns tend to resolve in explosive moves to new all-time highs. For the dollars versus Korean won, mind-bending. And we can see this, if you're looking at this chart now, you can actually see this is Korean won versus US dollars. And those big peaks are comparative to US dollars. You can see a sideways wedge forming with the Korean won comparative to the US dollar. And it is likely, according to TA, it's going to spike again. Now that spike's not a good one. That spike is the value of the US dollar comparative to the Korean won. So when that spike, that essentially means the Korean won is collapsing. The value of the Korean won goes through the floor comparative to the US dollar. Now remember, Korea is very important in global markets. It floats around the 11th to 14th largest economy in the world, a remarkable country. I have a very close connection to Korea. I speak Korean. I lived in Korea. I love the Korean people. I love the innovation that they create. And if you think of all the massive global companies in the world that are right up there, Samsung, LG, Kia, huge companies. And remember with Samsung, most people in the West think of Samsung as just making phones. No, not at all. That's just a small thing they do. The real money of Samsung is in fact in their financial systems. I remember seeing buildings in Seoul, huge, massive, ginormous buildings with the Samsung logo on it. And they're doing immense amounts of business, not just in creating electronics, but other things. Hyundai building not just cars, but also ships and plant and equipment immense innovation in Korea and when these markets collapse as in the Korean won collapses there will be immense flow on effects throughout the globe so this wedge that is building up in the Korean won markets is immensely concerning going further down the thread the Canadian dollar looks like it's about to break the wedge for a rapid move the CAD is going to very quickly get a lot weaker again we can see this on this chart here another sideways wedge that could break downwards which is immensely concerning Canada not one of the biggest economies in the world but certainly up in the top economies of the world with a huge land mass and from memory a bit of trivia for you kids Canada has the most amount of coastline in the world not the biggest land mass in the world, but when you take all their coastline, it is the biggest coastline in the world. When you go really north up in Canada, there are of course lots of islands which contributes to that big coastline. Completely useless trivia, relevant to what we're talking about now, but there you are. Moving further down, the pound, the British pound, is drinking at the last chance saloon. It looks like it's going to parity. So now we're looking at the British pound chart with not so much of a sideways wedge building but dropping to parity of where we saw it right at the bottom years ago, all these markets are starting to look very similar with first world currencies in big trouble. The euro has a few percent to go, but it's still shuffling towards the cliff. And the big disturbance in the matrix is the CNY. That is the Chinese Yuan, also known as RMB. The CNY, which conceivably could go to all new time lows, seen as highs on this chart, and that's because it's comparative to the US dollar, we can see that this chart looks very interesting comparative to all the other charts that we've looked at, the way the RMB moves or the CNY moves. We could see a breakout where this thing will go up on the chart, which means low comparative to the US dollar, which means the Chinese Yuan 
is going to drop immensely in value, which is going to have huge flow on effects combined with what's already happening in the China US trade wars. Plus, I would argue, a dash of economic immaturity where we've seen uncontrolled growth, where we have complete cities, townships built with no one to fill them, which is very dangerous. And some argue they're getting it ready for people to move in there. It doesn't actually really work that way. You don't build a huge city and just wait 20 years for people to be born and grow up and move into a city. No, it doesn't work that way. You need economic levers, mature economic levers, to slow down economies so you don't overexpand too quickly and create big issues of building too quickly. There are immense flow on effects for that. Further down into the next market, and this currency crisis of dollar strength is causing an enormous deflationary wave globally. The CRB is literally the second worst chart in the world after the EU banks, and we are right on the effing cliff of death. Right there today. I think oil breaks lower today. Onto the gold charts. Gold is rightly doing its job sniffing out big problems and is exploding higher, outperforming even the super strong dollar as gold begins to price in at the end of the game of an eventual massive readjustment to the dollar in 12 to 18 months. And here we see the gold charts creeping back up and doing what gold is arguably meant to do, create a kind of stable commodity. Now remember, gold is not linked to money. Gold is linked to nothing. And in an interview that I saw Naomi Brockwell do with Peter Schiff recently, she said something that was quite profound and really stuck out in my head. Peter Schiff was saying, what's Bitcoin backed by? And we could argue mining, the markets, consumer confidence, what the people say. And ultimately, as the Lark would say, Bitcoin is backed by maths. But then we say, what is gold backed by? And gold is not actually backed by anything. Now, this is a whole different topic in itself. Gold in itself is only backed by consumer confidence. When you really think about it, yes, there is some value of gold in electronics, but that is not the value of gold. We can use solder in electronics. And yes, there are different uses for gold in electronics comparative to solder. Gold has never had a value because of electronics. I mean, think about it. Gold has been valued even before electronics existed. On a side note on gold, on an episode I did with Bo Stoner in the Stokesy and Stoner show on my and his channel in recent weeks, we did an overlay of the Bitcoin chart on the gold chart. And we saw that when you change the time scales of Bitcoin comparative to gold, they overlay almost perfectly. That is, crypto moves much faster in all markets because it is new technology in a new global market backed by a new financial system. Whereas gold is much older and has been through a slower process. But when you lay these two charts over each other, you can see that in fact gold and Bitcoin are performing almost identically. And that moves on to the next chart down here, which is Bitcoin. Raoul states, and BTC, Bitcoin, is doing its job of suggesting an alternative system in gaining in probability it trades like a call option on a new system in my mind. The price moves are so enormous and thus the increase in probabilities are so fast that you have to use log charts. And that's what I was talking about, Bitcoin moving so quickly comparative to traditional markets that sometimes TA doesn't work comparative to how we would use TA on other markets, but that's not to say we can't use it. Moving further down, as it starts to get pretty bleak here, and the 10-year US bond suggests that bond yields are going to zero as a deflationary wave spreads like wildfire. And here is that chart of those 10-year bonds completely crashing over time consistently. Yes, there are some peaks and troughs there, but no matter which line we draw on this, it is all going down. Down to the short-term rates, twos, go to minus 2% or more. That's how you steepen the curve Yikes, he says. You can see Raoul's enthusiasm and emotion, if you will, as he goes through illustrating or commentating on these charts. It goes on. And that is how you totally F the banking system. The EU banks are right on the cliff of death. And the Japanese banks are right on the cliff of death too. And this chart is pretty alarming to me. You can see the Japanese banks, this drop over time, and now a sideways wedge forming. I cannot see a positive breakout on this cliff of death here. The Twitter feed closes off with this, and that would be the end game for the pension system and a huge loss of wealth for baby boomer retirees and the start of doom loop of BBB downgrades and a potential freezing of the corporate credit markets. 
Sadly, we are at one of the biggest junctures for markets in history. You may disagree with my assessment of the odds. It doesn't matter. But you simply cannot ignore the risk. Bonds, dollars, Bitcoin and gold. Thanks for paying attention. And that ends the Twitter feed there and brings us to the conclusion of this video. My crypto brothers and sisters, I am sorry to say that in my opinion and the opinions of many financial analysts and economists and arguably bankers, that we are about to see a financial collapse that the world has never seen before. It is going to be to an extent beyond what we saw in the GFC, beyond what generations saw in the Great Recession, and it is going to happen very quickly and there are going to be catastrophic losses for many people. Now for your reference, the main reason why I got into crypto is because I was fascinated and have always been fascinated with how money works. And crypto showed me a different world, an alternative to the nonsense that is fiat. The nonsense of fractional reserve lending and centralized so-called federal reserves that can print unlimited amounts of money, diluting everyone's money. And then I became even more fascinated with the concepts of bailouts and bail-ins, where someone can just say, we're taking your money. In all my life, taking someone's money was called robbery or theft. And yet here we are in financial systems, where that is in fact a part of doing business as a bank or a government. This video is not at all intended to scare you, but certainly keep you cognizant of what is happening around you and what the future holds for us financially, which will lead on to other effects in the world. I will be releasing a video shortly talking about the rainy day. And the rainy day is really about preparing for what will be coming. I've found that in my journey in crypto, many people are in fact preppers without even really knowing it. Now, we see preppers on TV where some might say they're crazy or extreme and others might say they're very wise and forward thinking. In any case, there's different spectrums of prepping, whether it's digging a bomb shelter in your backyard or simply putting money in the bank. There are different levels of prepping. As I prepare, as I hope you prepare, for the inevitable mathematical fact that there is going to be a financial collapse, as we've already seen in multiple nations around the world, I urge you to look at other systems, such as Bitcoin, to secure your financial freedom and future. There is nowhere to hide fiat currencies. That is, if you put it under your mattress, you're dealing with inflation, the possibility of theft, fire, and so forth. If you put it in a box in your backyard and bury it, no matter how secure you keep that cash, you're dealing with inflation. Then you try and put it in a bank, and no matter what bank you put it in, you're then dealing with bail-ins, inflation, negative interest rates, fees, and your account being held. So what do you do? Well, all you can do is look at Bitcoin. Thanks for listening. Happy investing. Be safe. And I'll talk to you next time.